Sarah. Hey there, I hope all is well. Questions. Would you consider making a video where you go over something like chapter one in detail, or a video with book recommendations specifically related to certain chapters and or whatever comes to mind? I'm only on page 90 and I am hooked. I haven't been this fired up and intrigued in a long time, so thank you. Brendan. Yes, I would consider. I've recently planned to record the entire book, actually. I'm getting prepared to do so. Thanks for motivation. Sarah. Hi there. I hope you are doing awesome today. Question for you. In your book, you spoke a lot about finding, searching for meaning throughout the various stages of your mental health journey. I couldn't help but wonder, given your organic experience, would Viktor Frankl's logotherapy be useful in some capacity for treating schizophrenia? I have yet to find any solid evidence for its efficacy within this realm and would greatly appreciate your opinion. Brendan. When I read Man's Search for Meaning, I was struck by how universal the need is to find meaning in one's life. So, I think that logotherapy can help schizophrenics like it might help anyone with issues related to what is happening to their psychological being. However, many of the symptoms of schizophrenia are exaggerated in the sense or belief that there is great meaning or significance being experienced. So sometimes, it is a simpler meaningfulness rather than a gigantic mystery which could prove most helpful for those with schizophrenia. I've often reflected that my world has become simpler as my delusions get chipped away over time. Logo excess to logo peace. I hope that answer is helpful. Sarah. It is very helpful. Thank you for taking the time to respond so thoughtfully. I don't mean to bombard you, but I do have two follow-up questions if you don't mind. Please feel free to skip them if they are pointless to ponder or too personal. Do you think the incorporation of logotherapy at some point during your treatment would have expedited your arrival to wellness? If so, at which point during treatment do you suppose you would have been most receptive to it? Brendan, thanks for the questions. Essentially, I would prefer if all primary caregivers understood the importance of meaning. When I feel looked at in a psych ward like a mindless test subject that probably hasn't been taking his meds as prescribed, such claims as I have heard have rarely, if ever, been true. When denied more humanity, I feel closer to a dissociated state. For all those doctors and nurses, however, who treated me like a human being with desire and intentions and perspective, then, by their inclusion, I felt reassured, restful, and like I'm actually receiving therapeutic intervention. I would always be receptive to the inclusion of the sense of and process of working with significant meaning, particularly from care practitioners. I know half the time I've been hospitalized that there was a crisis of meaning just as much as there was delusion. Pills of all sorts may conk me out and sedate me, but it was decisively my orientation to and conception of my experience, which in my eyes caused the turnaround in my being, which was then assessed as getting better. I welcome you to email me, Sarah, with more questions if you have them. Sarah, thank you for inviting me to email you. A little background. I'm currently working on a Bachelor of Science in Human Services. My hope essentially is to advocate for the incorporation of existential analysis in treating schizophrenia and work to eliminate the care provider bias you spoke of in your last reply in the process. So far in my studies, the client with schizophrenia has been presented in a seemingly two-dimensional manner in the literature. I was, of course, unsatisfied by this and went searching on my own. That's when I came across your channel. After reading your book, I was allowed access to three plus dimensions, and the topic of logotherapy leapt into view. As far as some questions, one, looking back, what questions would you have liked to have been asked in treatment? Brendan, I would have liked it if someone asked what happened to you? Why did events turn out this way? What do you want the future to hold? All too often, the doctors and nurses rushed me along the process, which in my case, sparingly approached in my book, 
was dealing explosively with trauma caused in my teens by the result of two much older sexual predators. The doctors and nurses may or may not have known what happened, but I felt regarded to be a set of symptoms that just needed to tone down and stop thinking so much and being so alarmed. But I've always been expressive. Sarah, during which phases of treatment do you believe the discussion of meaning would not have been effective, perhaps even harmful? Brendan, any time my delusions of grandiosity or self-reference are taking over my belief system, I could agree I need to limit the amount of time I spend arguing and dwelling on intense meaning. Viktor Frankl argues to me convincingly in Man's Search for Meaning that a primary reason for the sheer chance for survival of victims during the Holocaust was some kind of existential resilience, or at least that they had some habitual sense of or semblance of meaning or purpose they could make up day to day or hope that peace might return one day. I read Frankel to be saying that what this looked like was not uniform. I can only guess at how effective discussion is in times of war. I think it can't always be clear. No matter what else goes frighteningly wrong in life, from sociopathic fascism to sexual abusers, Frankel showed that people's association with positive meaning is crucial for containing outlook and hope. I think this is not fundamentally different for those affected by schizophrenia. Meaning is something both to extract luckily and to infuse laboriously. Sarah, what do you see as the potential downsides of using logotherapy to treat schizophrenia? Brendan, I mentioned above regarding delusional thinking and I also consider phases of exaggerated emotion, sociopolitical preoccupation and rumination. I could see there being potential clashes in treatment depending on ideology and philosophy. I could declare that the more open-minded and less dogmatic caregivers are, whatever their faith, the better the chances are for treating schizophrenia. For example, a conservative or religious doctor may not like their patient's radical socialism and view of animal consciousness, but not accepting those try to impose a conflicted sense of the world, disturbing the patient's connection and sense of meaning. A religious person or someone with some kind of problematic issues may be convinced that the adoption of untenable worldviews is the way to proceed for a schizophrenic. They want to control the meaning that comes up. I can say this isn't bull because all sorts of power struggles and historical conflict and caregiving relationships certainly exist. I note this isn't a popular topic in a doctor's office. Sarah. Have you ever been asked questions by providers in regards to meaning? Brendan, by researchers I have, during psychological full report interviews, a portion of questions usually relate to or inspire answers regarding existential issues and the sense of what is happening and what means what, what is important to you. Categories appear to the research in aggregate form, but I feel more addressed as a being with significance by these psychologists more than by many hospital staff who may just be too busy to entertain any questioning. Also, long-term out-of-hospital psychiatric care has been much better than hospital care, but sometimes I still feel a little poked and prodded. This has probably got better as I have got older and stigma has been eroded slowly. In the hospital, some nurses, I should note, do wonders for patients. They do this simply by sharing in some way, either by listening or showing understanding of some details of the whole story. Why is a patient there? More and more, even in the era of drugs and treating the brain, the tendency is to answer the question, stress, which is meaningful, and states we call suffering, are what's associated with the changes that follow and which we can note and potentially treat in the brain. They might not know the whole story, but just a little compassion and human interaction that can feel very meaningful indeed. Thank you, Sarah, for asking your questions and inspiring me to make this interview video.